With AOL, internet calls are off peak all the time. Any day, any time. It's never more than a penny a minute. So why not give us a spin? This is Channel 4. It's Lights, Camera, Action now. Stand by for Johnny Vaughan. Welcome to all of you, indeed. Welcome to all of you. Tonight on the film show, we remember when it was all field around here with a look at new movies that plunder the past. There's 30 years of Terence Stamp crammed into the limey. We shed a nostalgic tear over re-released classic cinema Paradiso, and we find out whether one new director's career is already history. Joining me tonight, three guests whose pasts are about to catch up with them. There's the sepia-tinted John Thompson, the very retro Jessica Stevenson, and from the land that time forgot, Hull, it's director Phil Davis. It's great to have you here. Now, my guests have probably been too busy indulging in an orgy of shiatsu, skin peels, and seaweed wraps to keep abreast of the week's movie news. So, as per, I've done it for them. Organisers of last week's glitzy premiere of Arnie's End of Days heaved a sigh of relief when Chris Eubank showed up to the screening. After all, it's not a proper premiere without Eubank. Other celebrity must-haves for any self-respecting showbiz do include Nigel Benn, last spotted at the launch of Seeger's Dreamcast, and EastEnders Adonis Dean Gaffney, last seen at the opening of an eyelid in Sheffield. Do you ever get invited to premieres? Do you, do you go? Do you, yeah. I would only go and see a film that I was interested in. So you wouldn't film. go to a premiere just because... Don't, 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 I'm not really into self-promotion. I'd rather be famous for the work I've, quality work I've done. But that's the textbook replies. And that's exactly what Woody Allen said to me when I interviewed him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Phil, what about you? Do, do you like going to premieres and do, do you like that side of, of the film business? Well, no, no, not really. I mean, I do go occasionally. You know, it's nice to go and see a film and go to a party afterwards and drink champagne at somebody else's expense. Jessica, do you, do you enjoy premieres? Never, you get I've invited never been to, to no, never been to one. I was kind of invited to one. I got a, a fax for, for Six Sense premiere. And then I, I was away on holiday and I came back and I called up the woman I was supposed to call up and she said, oh, God, you're just too late. I called up, Sh Sh Sean Pertway called up this morning. I had to turn him away. And I just, so that was it. That was as near as I got to go into a premiere. I've never been to one. Do you know, I've never been to one either. Have you not? No, I've never been to one. Never? Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> Honestly? No, I never have. I, d I don't see the point. You don't do that? You don't do no, that? Because normally I've seen the film before, if I'm going to go and see the films, because they're, they're hyping it and I've interviewed one of the people in it. So you go and see it at a review cinema and they say, you've got to come to the premiere. Like, you want to see this so again, film again with loads yeah. of famous yeah, people. I just don't get why. Mm. You're quite privileged to be in that position, though, aren't you? Thank you very much, John. Thank you. <laughs> and if you can't be bothered to show up at a premiere, but you still want to reap the benefit of someone else's hard work, why not line yourself up a cameo appearance? The film show's favourite chanteuse, Alanis Morissette, gives a brief showing in Kevin Smith's new film, Dogma. Meanwhile, Jennifer Tilly, Martin Scorsese and James Cameron are among the Hollywood players flitting across the screen in The Muse. It's quickly becoming the coolest thing in Hollywood to make as brief an appearance as possible in somebody else's project. In fact, remember that quick shot of a man's private member in Fight Club? Remember it? Sir John Mills. <laughs> And it's not just movies that feature big-name cameos these days. The TV series Friends has attracted Hollywood stars of the calibre of George Clooney, who, coincidentally, has a new film out. It's called Three Kings, it's been described as a comedy action adventure, and it's set in the hilarious environment of the Gulf War. Here's a snippet. Three soldiers. Ten hood. Uh, no. mm. Anyway, tonight's first new release is The Limey. Terence Stamp stars as ex-con, Wilson, who goes to the US determined to avenge his daughter's death. It's directed by Steven Soderbergh, which would make him the perfect person to talk to. Well, on one level, I think The Limey is a pretty straightforward revenge movie about a guy, a British guy who's been in prison most of his life, comes to Los Angeles to find out what happened to his daughter, who's died under very mysterious circumstances. But then on another level, um, it's a little more complicated. My name's Wilson. You wrote me about my daughter. 
This bloke she was bunked up with. Terry Valentine. What's he got to say for himself? It was my hope in, in trying to make a film um, like Get Carter and Point Blank that we could find a way to, to bring some level of emotion to the film that um, you wouldn't normally see in, in a, a genre film of this type. Jenny never told you about her dad. What dad? When he was in prison for nine years. He was released last month. As long as nobody can connect anything to me. I'm a really desperate man. Terrence knew those kinds of people. I mean, grew up around them. And Peter Fonda definitely knew those kinds of guys. With Terrence, it's a, a hollowed out quality coupled with a very conscious understanding of of how the cockney charm can affect people, and he uses it in a very self-conscious way in the film. He sort of drops into it, you know, when he gets into situations where he feels like it'll be to his benefit to drop into it. And I think that's a very, that's something that you'll find with people who, you know, live on a certain side of the law. You know, they're, they're monitoring people very closely and sort of wondering, okay, what part of my personality do I use to get what I want here. And I think Terrence understood that very well. You tell him! Get to get what I'm after. You tell him I'm coming! The day I die. Tell him I'm coming! I won't get to get what I'm after. There we go. That's what the director had to say. Let's see what the pundits think. Andrew Collins in Empire, an uneasy balance between brutal tension and outright comedy, while Simon Crook in Total Film says, a witty, gritty, masterful homage to a bygone genre. John, yes. pony or pucker? Pony. Really? You didn't like this uh, one at all? I, well, just, it has its moments. It's great, uh, some great action moments, you know, suspense. But I don't know what's happened to I, 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 I turn stamp, I see him as an icon. As, I see him as a film star, but not as a film actor. I don't want to upset him or anything, yeah, but yeah. it's like... He's not going to get you, John. I don't, right. I don't... <laughs> we might have to work with him, you never know. Oh, yes, true, yeah. The thing is, I just... I, there's something about his acting. I, I, I wondered whether it was supposed to be stylized. Oh, whether it was supposed to be... Stylized, right. or it's just awful acting. OK. Yeah, I didn't think it was awful at all. I thought he was. I thought it was. I thought it was brilliant. And I thought Steven Soderbergh was very Berg was yeah. very brave for actually filming him and, and using a performance that was so still, and, and and I felt very real. I mean, he's exactly like all the East End crims I know. Do you know, Maddie? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, but I thought he was brilliant. <laughs> Phil, did you enjoy this? No, I wasn't mad about it. I have <clears> to say. And what didn't you like? Well. I didn't like the basic premise. What is the basic premise? Well, the basic premise is Get this... Weekly gangsters. Get Carter. <laughs> it is, basically. So. I have to say, it didn't seem very very real to me. And Terence Stamp, I mean, he's a fantastic-looking man. Yeah, on, on, on the he's screen, he's, he's just absolutely wonderful. But as soon as he opens his mouth... <laughs> I, do, I just I know, but do you think he's the American it. idea of a Cockney rather than a that's proper exactly Cockney? I was going to say, I think this script has been written by an American. All that's right. from, missing from the script is boiled bo beef and carrots, basically. Gold blimey, gold yeah. 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 I, I don't know where you're doing where all this. Do you know what I'm about? <clears throat> I, I'm a Cockney born and bred. I didn't understand a word he was saying. See? Or why he was saying any of it. This film went down really well in America. I don't know if. Well, you see, it's an American's concept of England is very different to their perception. A lot, you see, the Merchant Ivory Land. To an American, that's why they love all those films. They, they, they love the quaintness. Well, they love them here, actually. The it Americans did sort of smack of a sort of, you know, uh, a, a sort of um, a transatlantic film. A sort of, you know, let, let's you could you could hear it being pitched at the beginning. You know, let's make yeah. a kind of L.A. Cockney gangster yeah, kind of combine the two. Terrence Stamp, and you could you could kind of hear that going Definitely. on at the beginning. Do you know, you probably wet the audience's appetite. Let's just see how a Cockney villain gets on in L.A. Here's Terrence about to bust some Cockney rhyming slang. Have a look at this. <laughs> Can I help you? Can't be too careful nowadays, you know. A lot of tea leaves about. You know what I mean? Excuse me? Tea leaves. Thieves. Terry Valentine. Do you know him? And, and who are you? Wilson. My name's Wilson. Well, Wilson, to start, I never heard of you. Well, I'm not that well known, except around certain districts and police nicks, you know. Police what? Who, me? No, can't be bothered. Hey, 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 hey. Who are you, and how did you get in here? 
Only a little bird told me that you and Terry Valentine have business dealings I don't together. know anybody named Terry Valentine. Don't you? Now you take a walk, pal, okay? You're making a big mistake. Come on. Hey! Well, did anything engage you in this at all, John? You, you said you thought it was pony at the top, which I thought was a big, very <laughs> brave <laughs> statement. Well, the thing is, <clears throat> yeah, I like the I like the people being shot. That was good. But um, the, my biggest problem for me was it was the American uh, Americans have this concept of they they always use props and things, but to make their acting more interesting, there's all that pausing and looking round and. Mm. But we we engaged with that. We're used to that American style. Yeah. Mm. But then Terrence Stamp comes on and does this very. I, I don't He's know brilliant. whether it's He's supposed so to be stylized. He's in a different film. He's in a different film. I don't understand it. Who do you think this film will appeal to? Idiots. People from you. <laughs> I, I, think, I, th I think it'd appeal to people who are into films. This is stupid. <laughs> or appeal to people who like gangster films. But this is not a very mm -hmm. good gangster film. I mean, what do you think about the, about the growth in British kind of gangster culture and the way that everyone, I mean, there's so many people. I think there's six out six next year. Out, there's yeah. like five being made. Well, this look, year. I think it's great that we make our own Two. films about our own stories and we don't have to keep looking to. But it's bad, perhaps, when they do pander to an American audience, and sometimes they actually suffer by then disassociation with a, with a, with a, with a British audience. Absolutely, I agree. Do you think I should go and see this? Um, yeah. Do you think I should go and see this? No. John? It depends what mood you're in. If you what fancy mood would I have to be in? Uh, you'd have to be drunk, I think. <laughs> really drunk? <laughs> yeah, drunk on a wet Wednesday, that's who you should drunk be. Drunk on a Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. And it's raining. Anyway, it's raining. Yeah. OK, thank you very that's much, all right. John. That's, uh, I think I've got an afternoon like that coming up. <laughs> of course. Uh, so that's good. Are you, are you free? <laughs> I, 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 I will put myself through it again. OK, there we go. Do you know what? Coming up in part two, the joy of projection in Cinema Paradiso and the misery of rejection as one new filmmaker has trouble getting his dream on the screen. Don't go away. I felt you were wonderful there. <laughs>
Phil Davis. Hello. And Jessica Stevenson. Hello. If you've just switched on, you must be gutted you missed part one. Just like anyone who missed Cinema Paradiso when it first came out. For ten years, they've had to listen to cinephiles banging on about how it's the best foreign film of all time. A deeply moving yarn about a young boy's friendship with the local projectionist, Alfredo, leads to a lifelong passion for cinema. That's what they say. Well, the good news is, the bores are about to stop. Because it's being re-released. <laughs> Ma allora che ho parlato turco, che guai, chi sta da leare? Fai finta di darmi ragione, hai appena vicino, fai come ti pare, ha ragione tua madre, un pazzo sei, si sì, pazzo! Ma come ha fatto sto peggiore bottato? Sta forza di guardare, ha imparato, cosa dell'altro mondo! Totò! Ora lo dico pure lo cazziere, non devi alzare più nemmeno del San Cinema, hai capito? Eh. There we go, I'll tell you what the pundits have said, uh, it's it properly John. Sit properly, come on. <laughs> We're doing a proper review now, come on. Ian Nathan in Empire said, Cinema Paradiso wraps you in a tender embrace and refuses to let you go. While Dan Jolin in Total Film says, it's a movie about movies for absolutely anyone who loves movies. About nine years ago, I took a girl to see that on a first date and ended up marrying her. Do you know what? <laughs> is it as good as everyone remembers, Phil? Well, it's a lovely film. I mean, it's gorgeous, and you, it, it does exert a kind of spell over you. But I, I have to say, watching it for the second time, it did seem to me to be very sentimental. I mean, it is saccharine sweet. But all the same, I mean, you just, you just love it, and it, it's, uh, it's two hours of bliss, really. It is two hours of bliss. Do you yeah. know, they, get, they should nick that for the poster. Mm. I think they should. Two hours of bliss. Would I get any money bliss. for that? Or mm. Do you know, you should do. Mm. Jessica, what did you think? Um, I think it's just one of the... I mean, nearest sort of perfect films I've ever seen. Structurally, um, you know, it, it contextually, everything, and the soundtrack, Ennio Morricone soundtrack. Every time you just hear the beginning of it, mm. you just get that kind of pain at the top of your nose, just sort of overwhelmed by the intensity of, of the, the kind of emotion. I think it's fun it's fantastic. John, do you get a pain in your nose? I'll get a lump in my throat. You get a lump <laughs> in your throat. Are you a fan of this? One? I am a big fan of this film, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a man who's afraid to cry, and it gets me. <laughs> Do you think it is? Do you think it is the, the language, indeed, the language so and language. that kind of setting yeah. that really adds to it? Because like they've it. got the backdrop, they've got the, the they've had the Renaissance, so they've got all these. I mean, they've <laughs> had the Renaissance. Young, I, I don't need to tell you that. <laughs> I don't need to tell you that. You know, oh. <laughs> but they've got they have they've got the backdrop and the, and the language. You know, it's lilting and it's it's, it's musical Italian. Lilting. I wouldn't like to see okay. it dubbed. <laughs> Am I being pretentious now? <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I can get away with it with my accent. What do you think about a Hollywood remake of this ever? Can you ever see that? I'd like to see it. There was a rumour that they were going to remake it with Bruce Willis. It, sh it shouldn't be done, but I'd like to see it. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I went to see sort of classic French or Italian film mm. at the cinema. Mm. I certainly think it's true that we're not releasing as many um, uh, subtitled films as we used to. I think if you talk to any distributor, they'll say it's because people don't go and see them. So I think there is a problem with them. The primetime video in Didsbury used to say on, on Betty Blue, it said, Staff recommended a bloody good film despite the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> Actually printed on the video. Okay. Uh, well, do you know what? I, you need, I need to ask you who's going to enjoy this. Do you know what? Everyone enjoys Cinema Paradiso. But if, like young Toto there, you're obsessed with movie making, you might think the hard work ends when the film's in the can. You can think again. This is the epic journey of one man's fight to be a part of the British film's successes. His mission to get his film Beach Boys on the cinema screen. His struggle, more than half of British films made never get released. His name, Richard Gossage. Beach Boys, a bittersweet tale of two boys searching for love, sex, and excitement in bright dawn. There is someone who could help. Alison Thompson, chief executive of the sales company, responsible for handling the sale of the crying game. Can you just explain what a sales agent actually does? Yeah, the sales company is primarily involved in selling British movies, right. uh, selling the kind of the quality art house and independent films. I sell them to distributors, yeah. so I will sell all rights to a movie. Are you getting more and more independent directors trying to sell their films to you? Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. We seem to have this culture of credit card movies here. It's arrived from the States. Right. So your film is very much the kind of film that seems to land on my desk now all the time. Right. 
What sort of percentage of those would ever make it to the big screen? Of the unsolicited films, a very, very tiny amount would be picked up. What did you think of Beach Boys? It's probably one of the worst films I have seen. Seriously? Yes. I don't think that you really um, had a grasp of what you were trying to say and the story you were t trying to tell and to whom you wanted to tell the story. Right. My buyers wouldn't have got through the, first, the opening scene. Right. You've got to instantly grab these people, other right. otherwise they've walked out and they're, they're on to the next movie. So who do you suggest that I go to see now? Well, I think you're going to find it quite tough uh, to go to sales agents because there is such a such a, a whole lot of product out there at the moment that we can afford to pick and choose. Yeah. So what you really need to do is go straight to the distributors yourselves. The target, Teresa Moneo, head of acquisitions at Miramax, distributors of Shakespearean love. I've just been completely brutally grilled and um, said that I, I should change my career path. <laughs> right? What do you think of the film? Overall, I didn't think it was that bad. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I felt it was a really great effort and, and it should be a really good calling card. Why do you think that it's so difficult to get low budget films distributed in, in the UK when, you, when the UK is meant to be going through a period of... Revival? Yeah. There's not that many art theatres. It's the problem of space, therefore there's not that many distributors, there's, for, there's not that many release slots, basically. Yeah. And the other problem, I think, is that uh, there's not that many UK distributors who are really supporting, I'd say, you know, local product. Have you got any advice for me? You should uh, try to go to TV. Yeah. Just move on in your head from yeah. thinking, okay, this is a theatrical yeah. movie, this is going to be exhibited in the cinemas. If the big boys weren't interested, it was time to seek independent advice. Originally I was in uh, production and I produced uh, several films myself and I saw really that uh, there was a lack of independent distributors in this country. We'd just uh, been set up for a year. We released uh, one film called The Titchborn Claimant with Stephen Fry. We focus a great deal on British films and want to support British filmmakers. Sort of a general view, what did you think of Beach Boys? My opinion is I think actually a lot of congratulations to you for a start to actually making a film. It's a good start. I, I, I would say though I don't think it is distributable no. as a film. If you think about what choice people have got the cinemas now, yeah. the film's got to be good enough to convince 100,000 people at least to get off the backside and go and watch a film and not go in to see The Sixth Sense or East Disease. Yeah. Do you think that I could find a market in TV? Uh, possibly abroad. So what do you think I should do next with the film? Personally, I think you should just leave it, put it down to experience. Exactly. You'd be very brave. You'd take a lot of criticism from a lot of people, but that's very useful. To put it to constructive use, move on to your next film. And then if that one doesn't work, go on to the third one. And you'll learn each time, and eventually you may come up with a masterpiece. And then I'll be knocking on your door to come and buy it from you. <sighs> Beach Boys, coming to a cinema near you. Maybe. How about that? Do you know what? 57% of films made in Britain are just lying on a shelf somewhere unreleased. How difficult is it, uh, Phil, to, to make and release a film? Well, it's very difficult. I mean, in, in the pre present climate, there's a lot more money sloshing around for films. A lot more money for investment in films than there ever was. But there's only so much space in the cinemas. Cold and cold. if you're lucky enough to get into a cinema, then the problem then is how to keep it there. I mean, I've got a film coming out on the uh, 17th of December called Hold Back the Night, and we're, we're Wait guaranteed... Wait a second, let's give this a proper plug. It's called Hold Back the Night, 17th of December. At the Virgin Watch Haymarket. It. At the Virgin <laughs> Haymarket. Go and see it. <laughs> now, the chat we saw in that, in that piece of uh, film, Richard, do you identify with his struggles in any way? John, do you identify with those kind of struggles? I felt at heart, I felt at heart really terrible. The way, but the way he was being treated, and some of those executives at, at Miramax and that, they seemed a bit too young and to, to have to, to be able to make those comments. You know, I'm a great believer in earning your stripes. Mm. And I, I don't, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I don't like, I don't uh, like, some, I don't like it when I'm being told what to do by upstarts. Oh, do you, do you feel a lot of them were a bit nasty to him? Mean, do you yeah. identify with his struggles there at all? It's hard when you put your, your heart and soul into something, mm. but it's a marketplace out there. What advice would you give to Richard? The advice, I'd say stick at it and yeah. just don't go to the abroad like that person said. Stick here and see if you can get yeah. it out on the... If you've, got, if you've got the strength and the determination to actually make a film without having distributors, then you're going to be able to do it again if you need to. It's the wheel that squeaks that gets the grease. Mm. 
Do you know what? We've looked at the week's new cinema releases, but as usual, I've got my guest to choose a selection for home viewing. John Thompson, what have you chosen? I've got for the Deer Hunter. Oh, uh, yeah, I know why. Because Walken. Christopher Walken's in it. OK. What's your favourite Walken line in this film? It's a good performance by him, perhaps his best. I like the trees, Mike. I miss the trees. Is that, is that one of his lines? I think it is, yeah. I've seen it for a while. I think that's it. I think that's on film four. Phil, what have you gone for? I've gone for Pie, which is uh, a very low-budget film in black and white about a bloke who uh, finds s some significant number that's got, the, that's got some hideous significance. It's frightened the life out of me, and I didn't really understand it, but it was great. If you don't understand it, you're frightened. That's a great combination. <laughs> yeah. I think that's out now to buy on uh, digital versatile disc. Jessica, what have you gone for? Edward by Tim Burton. It. And he was a great character in real life, Ed Wood as well. Yeah. It's one who intrigued yeah. me even before I yeah, saw the Yeah, he's a film. kind of real life character who used to make B-movies in the 1950s. Okay, and Ed Wood is out to buy on VHS on the 27th of December. Do you know what? You made great choices, guests. But I think I'm going to be snuggling up to Jessica on her sofa to watch Ed Wood. What a disappointment. Well, it's just you. Listen, major. thank you very much for coming here. I hope you enjoyed yourselves this week. It's been lovely to have you here. And next week, I'll be talking to the dogmatic Kevin Smith and donning lycra with the mystery men. I can hardly wait, and I'll see you then. Jessica, have you got any Angora sweaters? Um, no Angora, no. I've got a wool <laughs> skirt down to my knee. And have that's you? It. Yeah. Oh, marvellous. can't wait. And you'll see Johnny again next Sunday at the earlier time of ten past one. Up next on four, Shakespeare and Rembrandt are amongst a magnificent seven as the concluding part of Millennium Minds focuses on the arts. What you got? Wings. Real wings. Michael's an angel. A real angel. Though he's far from angelic, there's the women. And the fighting. But it's all for a good cause. William Hurt, Andy McDowell and John Travolta in Michael. Tonight at 9 on 4. What is it about flying that makes people act in all kinds of ways? Drunkenness? 
disorderly conduct, abusive behavior, violence, brief encounters, close encounters, dangerous liaison. Just wait until you hear their stories firsthand. Cut each playing crazy Tuesday at nine on four. For now, in the last of the series, Millennium Minds focuses on the arts. <laughs>